with diabetes get sick from time to time, just like people without diabetes. The average child catches a cold around eight times per year. But unlike their peers without diabetes, being sick with a common cold or flu can be more complicated for a child with T1D. Blood glucose might be more unpredictable and it may be easier to develop ketones when a child with T1D is sick. Remember, ketones are a type of acid and having too many in the body can lead to ketoacidosis and even death if they are not detected and treated with insulin. Everyone reacts a little differently to being sick, including people with T1D, and a person's sickness can be influenced by many factors, including age, weight, and the type of illness. In general, any questions or concerns about a child's sickness can be handled by their pediatrician or primary care doctor. However, specific questions that are related to T1D and blood glucose should be addressed to their diabetes care team. There are a number of steps that should be taken when a child with T1D is sick. First, it's important to continue delivering insulin doses. During an illness, insulin is still needed for the body to function and prevent ketones even if the child isn't eating. Even if the blood glucose is low, people with T1D need some amount of background insulin in their system. This is usually maintained with the basal insulin dose or the basal rate for insulin pump users. The basal dose or rate may need to be adjusted by your diabetes care team, depending on the child's specific situation and their blood glucose results. Generally, it will also be necessary to give some bolus insulin every three to four hours to prevent ketones. Second, it's important to check the child's blood glucose more often than normal while they're sick. The blood glucose may be hard to predict or may change quickly in response to conditions like vomiting or diarrhea. Third, it's necessary to check for ketones even if the blood glucose is in the target range or below. It is possible to have ketones at the same time as low blood glucose. Check for ketones during every bathroom visit using urine ketone strips or test routinely using a blood ketone meter. Be sure to check whether the ketone strips are expired before using them and do not use any expired strips as they could potentially be inaccurate. You can follow the instructions on the bottle or refer to our video checking for ketones in the blood glucose module for full instructions on how to check for ketones. The sooner ketones are detected and treated, the better. Ketones can lead to further complications that could require a visit to the emergency room. This is why it's important to be extra cautious and monitor the blood glucose even closer when a child with T1D is sick. If you have checked the child's blood or urine for ketones and the ketone result is traced to small, follow these steps. Drink water. Give a correction dose of insulin if the blood glucose is higher than the child's correction target and it has been at least three hours since the last correction dose. Keep checking the blood glucose every two to three hours. Keep checking for ketones at least every three hours until the result is negative. If the ketone result is moderate to large, follow these steps. Call your diabetes care team and give them the child's current blood glucose and ketone result. The care team will help determine if you need to give more insulin than normal. Follow your diabetes care team's instructions for giving insulin. Have the child drink water. Check the blood glucose every one to three hours, depending on your diabetes care team's guidance. Keep checking for ketones at least every three hours until the result is negative. If ketones are still moderate to large after two to three hours, call the diabetes care team again. Fourth, drink plenty of water. It's important to stay hydrated during an illness. The extra fluids help to flush out ketones since ketones can only be removed through urine. This chart can help you determine the right amount of water or fluid that should be given every hour. Keep in mind, the fluids do not need to be given all at once. Allow the child to sip or gradually drink the fluids every 10 minutes or when they're able to tolerate the liquid. If the child shows any symptoms of severe hypoglycemia, including confusion, slurred speech, double vision, inability to move or talk, or body jerking, check their blood glucose immediately and give fast-acting carbs or glucagon as needed. Glucagon must be given if the person is unconscious or if a seizure occurs. Glucagon comes in several forms, including injections and nasal sprays, so it's important that all caregivers know what to look for and are trained on the correct medication for the child. If your child begins convulsing or loses consciousness, give glucagon and call 911 immediately. Call your diabetes care team after the child is stabilized or if you need additional help. There are several additional sick day situations where it is advised that you call the diabetes care team immediately. Please call your diabetes care team if any of these situations happen. 
you need instructions on insulin dosing, the child vomits more than three times, there are moderate or large ketones, the child is unable to drink fluids for three hours, the blood glucose is over 300 even after giving extra insulin for sick management, there are any signs of ketoacidosis, especially difficulty breathing or deep breathing, you may need to go to an emergency room immediately to treat severe ketoacidosis. If the child is vomiting, it may be best to avoid giving them large amounts of food until their vomiting has stopped. Gradually, you can give them fluids like water or drinks containing electrolytes in small amounts to keep the child hydrated. Keep in mind, drinks containing carbs will still need to be covered by insulin like normal unless you have been directed otherwise by your diabetes care team. Give around a tablespoon of liquid every 10 to 20 minutes. If the blood glucose is less than 100 milligrams DL, you can give some regular soda or other sugary beverage in addition to water. You can gradually increase the amount of fluids when the vomiting stops. Wait a few hours before gradually returning to a normal diet. We recommend starting with something easy to eat, like soup or crackers, as a transition to normal food. If vomiting resumes, allow the child to rest their stomach for around an hour before continuing to give small amounts of fluids. Some cold medications warn that people with diabetes should not use them. These medicines may contain sugars that will raise the blood glucose slightly. It's okay for children with T1D to take these medicines as prescribed. If you have questions about cold medicines and how they might interact with other prescriptions, talk to your child's diabetes care team before giving the medicine. Blood glucose might rise because of the illness or the medication that is given to treat it. Either way, if the blood glucose is high, it can always be corrected later. If a child is taking steroids, notify your diabetes care team if you have any diabetes-related questions. We recommend all of our patient families prepare for sick days before they happen by being aware of what's needed to manage diabetes with an illness. When a child is sick, it can be difficult to bring them along with you when you go out shopping for things that they might need. Likewise, we do not recommend leaving a child with T1D unattended when they are sick. The best practice is to keep a stock of non-perishable groceries that could come in handy during an illness. We call this a sick day kit and we recommend keeping it in an easily separated container to avoid accidentally using the supplies when they aren't needed. These are examples of some items that you might want to have on hand to prepare for sick days with T1D. Mild carbonated beverages with sugar, including non-diet soda, ginger ale, seltzer, etc. Sports drinks, gelatin, Pedialyte or Infolite, popsicles, regular and diet, soups, saltine crackers, bananas or other fruits, applesauce, bread or toast, graham crackers, ketone strips, blood glucose test strips. You will thank yourself for making the right preparations when you inevitably need them. In our next and final module, we will talk about managing diabetes and special accommodations for kids with T1D at school.